All right, so welcome to Coffee Cafe. Here we're going to start the very first week of Coffee Cafe, and how we're going to begin is to pretty much walk you through the very first two weeks of Coffee Cafe. I already introduced you to everything that you need for this um, class project. I've also, every day, what I'm going to do is um, I will post. The sheets that you need. Okay, so right now we only need to use three out of the six I've mentioned. Okay, for the Excel spreadsheets and for the Word documents, I listed pretty much everything. Okay. Now, as far as that, this is what we're going to be looking at. We are going to be looking at Bob Mason, who is a uh, who is a man that wants to. Wants to open up a local small coffee shop in his neighborhood, okay? Um, and, of course, he uh, and he um, he's gotten an advice on how to start up his business and, of course, and uh, is doing a lot of research around the area, okay, uh, for areas for renting places and so on and so forth, okay? And, of course, he asked you, okay, uh, to be to intern for him to help him properly keep a, uh, his books, okay? And, of course, he has $30,000 to invest into his company, okay? So that's a key important. He has money readily to put into his company, okay? We've already set up my chart of accounts, right? I already told you, right? I'm going to be the accountant. You guys are going to be the bookkeeper, all right, so I've already provided you the chart of accounts, the journal, and the ledger, and everything that you need, okay? So in this case, uh, it's already been set up. I've already distributed to you guys. So let's see what happened on May 31st, Friday, okay? So Bob's friend, okay, he's from the bank, tells him about a small coffee shop that just um, went out of business and is up for short sale, okay? So it's currently short selling on the market. So he's selling Bob, you know, hey, um, you were looking for opening a coffee shop. This was a pre-existing coffee shop that already is there. So here it's currently being short sale. So take a look at it and jump in and put in an offer so you can um, buy out this place, right? So, of course, uh, the bank drop biz, uh, business um, went through some appraisal, okay, for the existing um, coffee shop assets. So, in this case, it's got some furniture, fair market at $4,000, and it's got a coffee brewer for $1,900. Total fair market value is currently $5,900, okay? And, of course, um, you meaning Bob, okay, offered to buy the business for $8,000, all right? So that means calculate the goodwill uh, generated um, from this purchase of the business. So in this case, how much goodwill is going to come out of this sale or this purchase, okay? Do you guys remember goodwill? How do you do goodwill? What equals to goodwill? Right. If you guys remember when you acquire a business, right, this is where goodwill is generated. If you go, you buy a business, it's gone through the appraisal, um, you know, it, it, its assets have been appraised. And here's its fair market value. It's at $5,900. And you decided to say, I'm going to buy it for $8,000. So... How much goodwill was generated if you're going to buy furniture for $4,000 and a coffee brewer for $1,900? The difference between what we're offering and what the market value given by the bank? 
Mm-hmm. And what do you get? I got $2,100. You got $2,000 of $2,100 worth of goodwill. So that means you have high hopes that this coffee business will generate you some money. All right, so you are buying the brand of this coffee shop and hope to um, ensure that it generates money. Now, in this case, it's May 31st. What do you do with this transaction, right? We had $30,000 to invest into our company, and first thing that we did was buy a business for $8,000. How do I record this transaction? So we we record the we put thirty thousand dollars in the business as a owner's equity. Mm, okay. And then and then we spent eight thousand dollars out of it to buy the business. And then where does the rest of the money go? Uh is staying equity, meaning it's our mm. money. So, it, okay, if you were to do that, right, go ahead okay. and test test your theory. How, does your debits and credits match? No. Okay. But the, the, the process is, but not on the books. Why can it not be on the books? Because the credit is not equal to this. Oh, okay. What's well, another reason why? This is very important, right? This is one of the rules of gaps. Why can I not journalize this transaction? Mm-hmm. You have $30,000 to invest, right? Yes. Where's that money from? It's from my own money. Okay. So, um, is this a personal transaction or is this oh, a business transaction? So, so we have to turn our personal money into a business money. And how we do need we to have it separate? And and so there you go. Perfect. The rule for gap here says that you need to you need to properly separate your transactions based on business and personal. What is the number one thing that you should have? in order for you to establish your the difference between a personal and a business transaction. We have to have a separate banking account for the business transaction. Exactly. So do we have one right now? Mm, not yet. Good. And I'm going to tell you, you will open one. However, right now, can I journalize this transaction? Not yet, okay, because of that rule of gap there. Because in this case, this money he's being he's buying it is coming from his personal checking account. You cannot write any personal transactions, uh, in a business banking book because why exactly the rules of gap says that you need to have a separation. The rules, um, the first assumption was the business and economic assumption, right? You need to have. A separation between your personal and your business so right now you don't even have a business bank account so this is considered a personal transaction because it's coming from your personal checking account so in this case we have to hold on to this information because yes we bought this on our personal um, amount yes you are able to transfer it over to a business from personal to business, but we'll get to that in a few minutes, okay? So good, we established what that we purchased the business, we gained goodwill, but you can't record it because you don't have a separate business checking account. All right, so that's something we have to keep in mind, All right? So then let's see what happened next. So then June 3rd rolls around and it's Monday and we end up applying for a DBA name, which is a fictitious name, which costs us $25 to apply. Now, in this case, what does DBA stand for? So if you ever 
try to open up your own business or apply for a business license, you have a couple options of what kind of business you would establish yourself as. So DBA stands for doing business as, okay? So what you're doing here is you're applying to change the name for your company, all right? So whatever it was before, you're paying legal fees to change the name to officially address it as Coffee Cafe. And it costs you $25. So, do we record this transaction? Yes or no? We can, you, we can claim it as a business expense. We but can claim it as a business expense, but... But the money is still coming from Bob's money, not the business money. Correct, right? So in this case, we recognize this This will be a potential business expense, yes. However, we, cannot, we still cannot record it because we still do not have a business bank account. So in this case, that's something that you also have to, once again, keep in mind. You should have the record for this, okay? Because uh, when you um, apply for it, you should get a receipt for that. Okay. So then Tuesday, the following day, June 4th, you decided to apply for the Nevada State Business License, which cost you $250, as well as apply for the City Business License as well. Um, that cost you a hundred dollars. Okay, so this is the form here. You're going to establish yourself as Okay, so in this case the legal name that you um, designated was coffee cafe The date that you um, are uh, Establishing is June 4th Okay for the license June 4th of 2020 and of course the business type is going to be a sole proprietor So that means only one owner one owner owner only so that means full responsibilities, liabilities, and whatever is going to be on Bob Mason because he will be the owner. Bob Mason. Okay? And then here's some information here. What is the street address, uh, city phone number, what's his email, say Bob at uh, Coffee Cafe, um, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, It's a fictitious business, so it's a fake address. So in this case... Uh, you have to apply it on a business license. Okay, so can is this a transaction we can also complete, or journalize, record? Not yet. No, it's the same situation, right? Because we still haven't opened our bank account yet. However, we did apply for a Nevada state license and a city business license so that's another um uh that's another thing that we should look out for okay so then we ended up on tuesday going to the bank and we decided to finally open our business bank account okay at the main bank of nevada okay so we officially opened our bank account right that means what? We have to record everything that we have purchased and we're gonna dump the rest of the money into our checking account. So now, how do we journalize this transaction? Today, what's today's date? June 4th. All right, what's the first thing you're gonna recognize? Well, what do you have, okay? We have to put the money into the checking account because we opened up a bank account. We bought some. Uh, we we had to in. Uh, we bought some furniture, right? We bought a coffee brewer, right? We got some goodwill, right? Because we bought the business that's more than what its uh than what its fair market value is. We incurred some costs and some expenses here, right? So let's go ahead and go ahead and do what? Our seven steps of transaction analysis, right? We should have collected records of every single transaction we have completed, right? So in this case, step three is we determine what accounts are going to be used. Well, we open up a checking account. All right, 
We need to acknowledge that we have to put the money in the checking account. However, we spent some of that money because Bob designated $30,000 to invest in his company, right? So now let's go ahead and use our business chart of accounts to determine if those accounts do exist and how am I going to uh, organize my information? Well, first things first, checking account. Do we have a checking account? Yeah. Yes, we do. Account number 10100. What about furniture? Do we have a furniture account? Yes. Yes, we do. Account number 13000. Okay. Uh what about a coffee brewer. Do we have a coffee brewer account? Yes. Yes, we do. Right, right here under equipment, we do have a coffee brewer account. Okay. Um, let's see. You said um, the court costs and the licenses. You said those were expenses. Okay, let's take a look at our expenses and see which one would most likely it would fall under. Okay, is it considered advertising expense? Mm. No. No. Is it a bank? Is it a bank fee? For sure not. Is it a business expense? Yes. Let's just okay. We'll we'll let's read through the list first, and then we'll see which one it will be. So business expense. Okay, it's a it's a possibility. What about freight expense? No. Insurance, interest, labor? Uh -uh. What about license and permit expense? That's more appropriate. That's more appropriate because you purchased a business license. Yes, you did. Two of them, state and um, city. Now, in this case, you ch also change a permit, permission, right, to change the official name so in this case i guess you can put it into there as well because in order for you to uh, get your business license you have to change your name in the first place so in this case okay there you go we got business and license or license and permit expense for sixty thousand six hundred. okay and what was that thing that you said what's an original investment called uh, owner's equity. Do we have an owner's equity account? Yes. Yes, we do. 30000 All right. So we have all the accounts that we need to go ahead and journalize our transactions, okay? So in this case, right, first thing I'm going to recognize is I have to put this in my checking account, right? We already established this was account 10100, right? Now, why is my checking first? Am I increasing my checking account or am I decreasing it with money? You're decreasing it because you're buying something. Hmm. Now, I'm depositing money to my bank. Oh, never mind. So you'd be increasing it because you're, okay, yeah, I'm for you're depositing money into the checking account. Correct. Because okay. you're not calculating the your personal money or business. Well, we haven't talked about that yet. Oh. Okay, so in this case... I know I opened up a bank account, so I have to deposit money because they're going to require you to deposit money anyways, right? Usually they say bare minimum that you got to do is at least $1,000, right? That's the rule of opening up a bank account is you have to put money into it regardless. They're not going to let you open up a bank account and walk away without putting anything in there. So in this case, you're going to have to make a deposit regardless, right? So we'll just, fit, we'll just lay out the accounts first, and then we'll figure out the debits and credits in um in a minute so in this case at least we recognize we're going to be increasing our checking account because we're depositing the money now what were the things that we bought what was the first thing that i purchased the business oh sorry no that's fine the business right now what did the business have you can't just say i bought the business for eight thousand dollars it came with the, uh, what you call it, the utility. I mean, the utility and stuff, the furniture, the coffee brewer. Yes, it came with furniture, 
right, which we already established does exist, right, for 13000 right, that was the account. We also established that there was a coffee brewer. I don't remember the account number. So the coffee brewer was account number, I think it was 15. 15010 is the account for my coffee brewer, right? What 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 is this considered? This is considered a fixed asset, right? So 15010. Right? I also what else did I get out of the business? What you got the actual building itself? Mm, you didn't get the building. Is it the goodwill? You got goodwill, right? You got because you added value into a company that was already existing. So you have you generated goodwill. Okay? Which we know was account number nineteen one hundred. Nineteen one hundred, thank you. Okay, good. Account number, 19100. Right? And then what else? What else did we incur? The license and permits. We did, right? And that's an expense account. Now, did we increase our expenses or decrease them? Decrease them. Mm, why would you decrease your expenses? Because you're paying for the license and permits. Okay, so your you'd be increasing your expenses, right? Gotcha. Okay, because in this case, I incurred expense. I had to spend the money. Now, yeah. think of it this way. Because I spent money, you're decreasing your checking account. Correct. But I increased an expense. So in this case, uh, what's the rule on how we increase our expenses? Debit or credit? With a debit. You with a debit. So license. And permit expense. Okay, for 6200 I don't remember. I think it was 60 6,600. 60 yeah, close, close. I was, I was close. So 6,600, okay? And last but not least, right, we acknowledge that we had some owner's equity. Are we increasing my equity with my original investment or are we decreasing my equity? We are increasing. We are increasing we are, because we, we are we're, putting the money into the business. Correct. We're increasing the value of my company. So in this case, we're going to associate with the credit, right? So in this case, I'm going to indent. That's the rule. And I'm going to go ahead and put in owner's equity, right? For account number 30,000. Now, we can do either or, or we can just list them out one at a time. How much was my original investment? We had $30,000 to spend. Good, right? How much was my furniture? How much was my furniture that I purchased? Uh, 4000 Four thousand dollars. How much was my coffee brewer that I bought? One thousand nine hundred. Okay. How much was the goodwill I generated from buying this company? We put twenty one hundred dollars. Good. And what was the grand total business license and permit? $375. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay $250. So if you want to do it in the Excel to ensure your accuracy of your, your calculation here, you could just go ahead and put in the formula right here. $250 plus $100 for the um, city 
plus $25 worth of the court cost to change the business name. So in this case, I got a grand total of $375 worth of business permits and li license and permits expense, right? So how much leftover cash should be going into my checking account? Right? You can either do either or, right? What is my total debits versus my total credits here? Okay, so I'm at $8,375. So how much money am I going to actually be putting into my checking account? Twenty one six two five. Is that correct? If I add that in there, it gives me an exact amount of thirty thousand dollars. So in this case, yes, that's correct. Okay. Now in this case, I don't want to put my debits and credits in there. I usually do that on on the side just to check, but that's how I do it. I don't leave it in there. I de I delete it immediately because I know for a fact that even if you wanted to double confirm this, right? You can easily just go ahead and equal sum your credits because you only have one credit anyway. And if you verify that, that um, your total columns for your debits is going to equal $30,000, then you are also, that's another way that you can test uh, your debits and credits are going to equal by simply um, creating the formula right there. Okay, so in this case, there you go. That was my very first journal. Now, I need a description. What's my description going to say? What did you do? Uh, you purchased, uh, you just purchased supplies for the, well, you didn't, well, I mean, you didn't purchase separately, but you inherited supplies that you had paid for. And you got, you got Goodwill and you bought the license and permits. Okay, perfect. So in this case, well, first off, you can also start off that you opened up a bank account, right? A main bank, a main, main bank main bank or, or okay let me just write open open bank account if you want to be specific you can say business bank account what did you do you purchased a business for eight thousand dollars right you also um got a um state license for 250 you got city license for a hundred dollars and of course you got um, court cost which cost you $25 right you can do it like that and that should be plenty enough right information if you want to go into details I wouldn't list out what those items are, like furniture was for um, $4,000 and Goodwill was $2,100, because what are you doing again? You're repeating information that you already put in your journal. Is that necessary to repeat what you just put in your journal? No, and because it, it's just supposed to be... Uh... It's just supposed to be an extra description trying to explain it. You already put that up there, so it'd be redundant. Correct, right? In this case, I'm just I'm just elaborating what my license and permit entails because in this case, right, it's 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 all together in one. Where in this case, I'm elaborating what it is, but I just go ahead and put I purchased a business for eight thousand dollars. I didn't have to specify that it came with furniture, um, goodwill, or anything because. Goodwill generally comes from a business anyway. So this $8,000 purchase for the business is pretty much good enough. All right. It's pretty self-explanatory because if you add up your furniture, your um, your coffee brewer and your Goodwill, that is equivalent to $8,000. And on top of that, you just open up a bank account. So that's also the three things that you can just be descriptive. It's already done by um, minimizing what it is, but also giving you enough information to recognize what this transaction happened, what 
happened here, right? So in this case, boom, I finally finished my journal because I got the date, I got the accounts, I got the description, my total debits match my total credits, my journal is complete. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm going to have you do now. Now that I completed my journal, I want you to transfer and post all of these into your ledger, okay? Because the most important thing here is, is your checking account. You need to know how much money you have in your checking account at all times, right? In this case, we're not looking at using mobile apps for this, okay? Right, we're pretending that doesn't exist, so you need to have to um, find some kind of way to manage your money better. And the best way to do it is to, on a daily basis, create, which we already created, a general ledger, which is going to reflect how much money each account is going to have, right? So this is where I'm going to, once I finish my journal, next step is I'm going to post it to the general ledger, okay? Now, in this case, the chart of accounts is also in order by account type as well. So as you saw, we were scrolling through the pages and things like that. So we know for a fact that we have a bunch of assets, we have an expense, and we have an equity, okay? So as long as we know that because we found it on our chart of accounts, we can go ahead and utilize our um, general ledger a lot more easier, right? It doesn't have to be in order, okay? But in this case, we, um, we, we were able to put it in order, okay? So starting with the first one is your bank account. Now, in this case, specifically, did I actually use my bank account and I journalized using my bank account? No. So whatever that you posted into your journal, you're going to reflect it into your actual ledger. Excuse me one second. Okay. So in this case, right? Our first account that we have here is my checking account, not my bank account. Even though it falls under my bank account, I actually have a designated account for just my checking account. Remember, because the chart of accounts, once it exists, the ledger will come right after, right? You have to take every account that's on your chart of accounts and you're going to create ledgers out of them. So in this case, my checking account is right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post it to my ledger. Exactly how I have it in my journal is how I'm going to post it into my ledger. So in this case, I have a checking account, right? I verify that it's account number one to, uh, 10, 10, 100, and I debited the account for 21,625. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say today is, today is June 4th, what did I do? So this is where I can add more descriptions to this exact transaction. Well, what did I do? Why did I increase my checking account? You put the money in. Yes, you opened your bank account. Open bank account. So therefore, you have an opening balance. Okay, so you open up your bank account. Now, in this case, what's my post reference here going to be? In this case, your general ledger and your general journal, they're going to have different post references. Why? Because in this case, right, my post reference on my journal is going to reflect if I have account numbers. I'm going to use my account numbers there because that's going to double confirm that I'm putting them in the right account. But in this case, right, for your ledger, you already know your checking is 10100. So what is this post reference going to represent? This post reference is going to represent where on what page in your general journal did this transaction appear on? And in this case, what page am I on? 
the first page. You're on your first general journal page out of 27, right? We don't need to go that far because right now our transaction is right here. So that means when we keep a good track record of this, if I need to go back and fix something or something's not right, right? If I find a mistake in my journal and find a mistake in my ledger, I can backtrack to where that transaction is. So in this case, where, when did I open up my bank account? I, I opened my bank account on my general journal page number one, okay? Now, how much did I debit it for? I debited it for 2,160, dollars okay? Now, in this case, I left it formatting however you want it to be. So if you choose dollar sign, go for it, or accounting style. I like comma style because uh, sometimes those um, dollar signs can kind of, uh, they, they kind of look like fives. So um, I want to make it very strict and clear that this is $21,625, okay? Okay. I didn't credit my account. I only debited, okay? So this is exactly how the uh, the normal balance comes from because in this case you would normally increase your checking account with a debit right so in this case because i started out with zero dollars what is my current balance i have a debit balance don't i so therefore you should have a debit balance equaling to twenty one thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars Okay, because I didn't start with anything and because I'm going to increase my account, right? If I'm at zero and I tip the scale to the left, where is my scale at? It's on the left, right? So that's exactly how I'm going to interpret this is, okay, I just put $21,000 on the debit side. So that means my balance as of June 4th is currently $21,625. Okay, on the debit side. Okay, so that's how you're going to interpret every single transaction. And what's going to happen is every time you use a certain account, I'm going to show you how the numbers change so you can actually have a running balance at all times. So for now, I've entered in my first one. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through every single account that you listed in order. Okay, because there will be chances where we will see accounts that are out of order on our journal and what are you going to do most cases number one rule for any beginner for accountants is they decide oh i'm going to skip this one and then i'm going to journal i'm going to record this one and then i'll come back to the other one and then what happens is when they get through with the list they end up forgetting to enter in that one transaction and that's what causes the discrepancy okay now Yes, you can if you want to. You can self-reference if you don't want to type in your answers, okay? Now, depending on what kind of computer you have and depending on the amount of capacity for random access memory you have is going to determine whether you're capable to do that. Because if you don't have enough random access memory and you're opening way too many files at once and also handling the Google Classroom at the same time, your chances is you're going to lose that information and it's going to crash, okay? So in this case, that's why there's rule number two. Be careful and, do, and make sure you double check your work that every time you're transferring information from one spreadsheet to another, you are not making any typos because that is going to be another accounting mistake that is very, very common is human error. We always type things in too quick. We punch in the wrong numbers. We fat finger a lot of numbers that can produce inaccurate data. So in this case, make sure. Did you type in 21,625? Does it match your journal? Yes. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing. And now, what's the next account that you increased? In this case, I increased my furniture account. There are a couple ways that you can use to verify or search up your um, accounts. If you want to use the, um, the Excel way where you can actually locate those instead of scrolling through all these different, different, different accounts, 
you can um, do the click the A row, right? And then you're going to do control F, which was uh, to control and find. And when you do that, it's going to pop up at the top of your window and you're going to key in what you're looking for. All right. And it's going to automatically locate where that account is going to be. Now, for this scenario, you, do, you don't necessarily need to absolutely do that. It does take some time because you have to, you know, click on this uh, control F and then type in the letters. Right. In this case, I can tell you that each account or each list here, there's not that many accounts. You, you're able to scroll and locate those accounts much easier. You can also, again, identify for this, in this case, right? You could scroll down and they're going to be in the exact order. So the next one is going to be 10, 200. Then the next one's going to be 11,000. So you can kind of, you can kind of already scan through that. They're going to be in the exact number order. So it's going to be much more easier to find. Now, in this case, it's up to you what you want to do. That is a shortcut that you can use for Excel to go ahead and be able to, to find the account that you need. But for this class, I'm just going to go ahead and just scroll because I already know there's not that many accounts to go through. So in this case, inventory, inventory. Okay, furniture is right here. See, already I found furniture. Okay, account number 13,000. So in this case... Right, I can go ahead and say today's date, June 4th. What did I do? How did I acquire furniture? We're in the furniture account. Is, we, go ahead. We bought the furniture. Now in this case, you're in the furniture account. Is it really necessary to repeat that you purchased furniture? No, but but we we acquired the four thousand worth of furniture. Okay, sure, sure. Now in this case, again, you could even be more specific. You you could say that I bought the furniture from a business, and you can even you can even elaborate the exact date that you purchased it because remember, you didn't purchase it on June six, did you? No, we bought it on May 31st. We bought it on May 31st, right? This no, this date here is only because you opened up your business checking account to verify this is a business transaction. So make sure if that is something that you need to make a note for, right? So this is where the pertinent information necessary in regards to a transaction is going to be important. Now, I did mention this a couple times ago, way back when. Pertinent information. You do have a designated area. It's called the notes to the financial statements. But we're not, I'm not going to teach you to produce a financial statement record uh, report for this, for this class. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all that pertinent information right here in the notes section on my general ledger. Because you can, right? It's no one says you can't. All right. So you can put as in a much information. You can write a whole paragraph if you really wanted to. But in this case, it says items here, but um, it's your notes, items, whatever you want to call it. Okay. It's your description. So in this case, I can say, right, uh, purchase, um, purchase, uh, furniture from business on May 31st, okay? Right, post reference, when did this happen? General journal, page one. And how much did those furniture items cost me? $4,000, okay? Now, here's a question, right? You just bought furniture. Is it specific furniture? It's a group of furniture. We don't know what they, they are. Right? In this case, I'm going to tell you this. I We don't care to specify what kind of um, item or furniture that you purchase because we're going to resell it to and, and get rid of it. Right? We're, we're not going to reuse, you know, an old coffee shop's furniture, right? We're going to buy new furniture and make the, the coffee place, you know, 
custom to us, right? To our liking. So in this case, I don't even care to list out what kind of furniture I purchase. I'm just going to um, leave it the way it is, grouped up as just regular furniture, and that's it. All right? Now, again, if I started with a zero balance and I debited my account for $4,000, what is my current balance going to be? $4,000. All right? So now we can go ahead and move a little quicker now because we kind of understand now, right? So next account we have is a coffee brewer. So in this case, computers or office equipment right here, coffee, um, coffee brewer. It's under equipment. Same thing, you can go ahead and initiate what you want to say. So you could say that you purchased um, per, purchased uh, brewer. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call this brewer number one. Okay. Brewer number one from business on May 31st. Okay. When did I do this? On general journal page one. And how much did that for that coffee brewer cost me? Nineteen hundred dollars. Right. So that means, right? I'm verifying with my journal that I am that I debited my account for nineteen hundred dollars. So there you go, nineteen hundred dollars. Okay. And of course, because you're gonna start from zero and you're gonna have a debit balance of nineteen hundred, so therefore you're going to have a $1,900 um, debit balance. Okay. So let's see what's next on the list. Goodwill. Goodwill is also a other asset, right? Because can you touch Goodwill? No. N no. We, in ge we generated Goodwill out of thin air, right? It's because we saw some fixed assets that cost... $5,000 and we decided to purchase it for 8,000. So we ended up generating that extra in that extra invisible um, right item, right? So it's going to see could be considered an other asset. So in this case, we got deposits, goodwill is right here. All right? So, it's the fourth and what do you want to say here? You could say purchase business all right on may 31st right and if you want to list it out that you paid eight thousand dollars when the fixed assets were um five thousand nine hundred it's it doesn't really matter here because at the end of the day what did you generate you generated the 2100 you don't need to be that specific in regards to that right you could just say you purchased the business on um May 31st, because it's kind of self-explanatory, right? You generate you generate goodwill when you buy businesses, right? So, general journal page one, and how much did I generate from this business? $2,100, okay? So if I have a debit balance, right? If Or if I debited my account, that's going to increase my goodwill by $2,100. Okay. So let's see what's next on the list. I have license and permit expense. So I, I don't need to be in my assets tab anymore. I need to go ahead and fast forward to my expenses operating expenses tab. Okay. So in this case, I have license and permit expense. Okay. Oh, I missed it already. Uh, license and permit expense, salaries, office, loss. There it is. License and permit expense. Okay. So in this case, right? Um, you want if you want to be specific on the days that you bought them, that's a that's up to you. I could go ahead and reiterate that the state license cost me two hundred and fifty dollars. Right, city license cost me one hundred dollars, and then court cost to change name. Right, that cost me twenty five dollars. Okay, general journal page one. 
And in grand total, if you want to verify again, 250 plus 100 plus 25, total of $375 worth of um, business license and permit. But again, we already did the calculation on our journal, so you just have to double verify. Did you put $375? Yes, you did. Okay, and again... Account balance, since it's the first one, it's just going to be whatever you have um, created. Because, again, right now, you're at a zero balance in every single account. If you put uh, something on the left, it's going to mean that you're going to be on the left side. All right? Last account that I have on my journal is going to be owner's equity for $30,000, okay? So I'm going to locate where my equity accounts are. So here's my equity. All right, first one I have here is owner's equity, account number 30000 which on June 4th, you can go ahead and say, what is this? This is my original investment. Right, this is the amount of money that I de um, designated for to open up a business. Right, so this is my original investment. Okay, again, when did this happen? General Journal, page one, and. Am I debiting or am I crediting my account? What does your journal say? Credit. We credit. So this case, that's also one of the mistakes too, is that everybody assumes, oh, we're just going to plug in as we go and just fill in the columns as we go. No. You have to be very careful which column you are putting your numbers in because in this case, I don't need to be in a debit. I typed it in my debit. I was like, wait, I'm not debiting my account. I need to make sure that I am crediting my account for $30,000, okay? So if I am crediting my account for $30,000, what should be my normal balance? It's going to give me a $30,000 credit. Okay, so that's where the normal balance is starting to make sense, right? Because we increased my uh, equity account, which normally has a credit balance. There you go. It is on the credit side. All right, so here you go. Now that I went through every single account on my journal and I went through every single account on my ledger, I am now officially done. Okay, now... As we progress and keep continuing on and on with this scenario, right? What you're going to notice is you might not have to stop here. You might have to continue going on through other worksheets, other things that you have to finish before finishing up with this transaction. In this case, there's nothing else I need to do, right? I, I, don't, I didn't buy any inventory, so I don't need to do an inventory worksheet. I'm not going to do depreciation yet, even though I purchased fixed assets. Depreciation happens at the end of the accounting period, right? We just started, um, and we didn't deal with anybody, right? Yes, we dealt with my main bank account, but what transaction did I do? Did I pay the bank money to make a checking account? No. You just simply opened an account. Is that considered an actual legitimate transaction? No. Okay. So in this case, I don't need to deal with anybody, so I don't need to do my subsidiary I, and so on and so forth. Right? I don't need to deal with my inventory worksheet. So now that I completed everything, right, and I verified all my numbers are in the correct spots, I can now go ahead and say I am done with this transaction and we can move on to the next one. Okay. So same day. And after I've already um, did my first journal, what happened here was I end up applying for a line of credit to the main bank of Nevada. Okay. All right. Now, I applied for the for a credit line 
from Main Bank of Nevada. Is this a transaction I need to record? No. Why? Because you have just applied for it. You haven't spent any of it yet. Good. Right, you just applied for it. Number two All is... All you need to do is make sure that you have, um, when your card comes, you've got an account so you've got some place to write transactions after. Okay, but in this case, I'm applying for a line of credit, not a credit card. Right. Right, and this line of credit, we don't know what it really does, right? In this case, it, it will be explained yeah. later on in the future. But in this case, right, I applied for a line of credit. Did I get approved for a specific amount? We don't know. No. We just simply applied for it, right? It has to be based on what the bank looks at us, right? They also have to run our credit score to make sure that is this enough money to even cover whatever the line of credit is used for? I don't even have the approval number. So in this case, there is no transaction because two things. You just applied, so there's no real transaction, no real money going back and forth. Two, you don't even have an amount. So in this case, no transaction necessary, but it's definitely something that you should keep in mind that you applied for a line of credit. Okay? All right. Next, we have here on the same day, we end up selling our furniture for $2,000 worth of cash, okay? And we end up requesting a new ledger account to represent the, to record the loss that we incur, right? So in this time, we decided to sell out our entire furniture. But when we sold it, we sold it for a total of $2,000, okay? So let's, let's, let's think about this, okay? When I originally purchased my, um, my furniture as a grand total, it cost me $4,000. But because I had to resell it because I want to get rid of it, right? I don't need it. Maybe I, I don't need it, right? I want to buy my own furniture to design the, the coffee shop how I want it to be, right? So when I end up selling that furniture, I only end up getting $2,000 out of it, cash. So... What does that mean? I lost money, right? Because it cost me $4,000 to purchase originally, but I only got $2,000 out of it. So what happens here is I end up incurring a loss. Okay? Now in this case, right, let's go ahead and double verify, right? Do I have a cash account? Yes or no? In your chart of accounts, let's verify. Do I actually have a cash account? I don't see one. We don't have one. So what's your assumption? You need to open one or create one. Uh, in this case, all the chart of accounts are already pre, uh, they're pre-made. So this is all the accounts that you will need. You don't need to create another account. If I don't have a cash account, what's the assumption I did? Put it in checking. We went to go ahead and put it into the checking account. So in this case, I do have a checking account, don't I? Yes. Account number 10100. Now in this case, I also have to record a loss because I sold my asset, right? I'll go ahead and let you know that this is going to be considered an expense, okay? Now, do I actually have an account that's designated for that loss? Would it be the loss on disposable of asset? Correct, because we got rid of the asset, right? We got rid of the, the furniture. So in this case, yes, I do have a designated account for the loss and disposal of asset. It's account number 6700. Okay. And last but not least, I got rid of my furniture. We already know my furniture account exists, right? Okay. And that's account number 13,000. Okay. So let's go ahead and go ahead and journalize because we have everything that we need uh, to journalize this transaction, right? We know what we're going to do with the money. Right, since we got cash for it, we're going to take that money and we're going to dump it into my 
checking account. Right? Now, how much money did I receive? $2,000. We received $2,000. Okay? So, next one is... Now, loss on disposal of asset. I already let you know it was an expense account. Now, because it was an expense account, right? Am I increasing an expense or decreasing my expenses? Decreasing it so it's a debit. Yes, because in this case, because we sold our furniture, we end up incurring that expense. We end up incurring a loss. So in this case, loss on um, disposal of asset right, which was 6,700, right? Now, before we determine what that is, right, we also got rid of my furniture. How do you get rid of your furniture? Are you gonna increase it or are you gonna decrease it? Decrease it. We're decreasing it, right? So am I going to debit or am I going to credit my account? Credit. You're gonna credit because that is an asset, right? How do you decrease assets? You decrease it by a credit. So in this case, I indented my account or my um, journal right now. And I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to get rid of all my furniture. Right? Now, if I got rid of all my furniture, how much did the furniture cost me? $4,000. So in this case, how much of a loss did I actually take? $2,000. We lost $2,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish it up my uh, journal with a description. What did I do? What happened here? You sold the furniture. Good. Sold furniture, right? And what happened here? Sold furniture with a loss of $2,000. Right. We have to acknowledge that we lost um loss on loss on sale of furniture right we end up getting a loss okay do you need to specify how much you lost on that furniture no you already identified no. it right here in the journal okay all right my journal is complete okay so what's step number two Transfer all of it to the ledger. Yes, transfer all to the ledger, right? So in this case, first thing I got to do is I got money in my checking account. So checking, right? All the way at the top, checking, right? What happened here? We got some money. Mm-hmm. Sale of furniture, okay? Now, before I continue, question to you. Did I really, did I really put the money in my checking account? I would assume so. <laughs> well, we, we, so we just encountered our sale with furniture from some random person who bought it, right? And they gave us $2,000 cash. It's speci it speci specifically said that. We didn't deposit it yet. All right, we'll talk about the deposits right after this, but in this case, good. The money, the cash that I received from that sale will never magically, dis it will never magically appear in my checking account, okay? That would be awesome. The guy didn't sell you, the guy didn't cash up, he didn't send you any money virtually. So in this case, he gave you cash, right? So you need to make sure that at the end of this, you go and make a deposit, okay? So, but in this case, I'm gonna record it now. Might as well, don't just stop in the middle and uh, do your transactions then, because that's also gonna cause you to forget where you are in place and could also forget, you might end up forgetting to um, finish your transaction. So in this case, right here, I'm just gonna finish my, my ledger and then we'll do everything after afterwards, okay? So in this case, right? Good, right? It happened on General Journal 1. Now, did I debit my account or did I credit my account? Did I earn money or did I decrease money? 
get there because you added it to your account. You increased it. Correct. So in this case, how am I going to figure out what my account balance is? So this is where I'm going to teach you, right? Now, if we know this, right? If a debit increases your account, right? And right now I currently have $21,625, uh, right? So if I have to, I just debited, deposited more money into my checking account, right? How will my new account balance look like? Well, if you add it, yep. you can get better. Correct, right? So in this case, how am I going to do that through Excel? Okay, there's a few things that I can do, right? I'm going to sell reference because it's easier for me, and plus it makes it easier for you to copy down the formula. So in this case, right, because I am working on this one right here, I'm looking at this cell right here, the empty cell in that same exact row that I just deposited twenty, the $2,000, right? Now in this case, I need to start off with what my previous account balance was. In this case... I was at $21,625, right? I'm going to add, so use your, your, use your symbols. I'm going to add my debit of $2,000. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to subtract my credit balance in that very same row. Okay? Why? It will work. Uh, I'll show you what will happen, okay? So in this case, I'm I'm minusing my credit here, even though there's nothing in there, right? And I'm going to go ahead and press enter. So now it's telling me, okay, it's going to take my previous balance, it's going to add $2,000 and subtract nothing to give me a total of $23,000. So watch this. Since I have my formula in here, I can double verify that my formula is in there, right? Because I sell reference in the way that I sell reference, that means I can copy and paste this formula all the way down through my row. Because right now, when I copied it down, it's still grabbing the previous number and it's adding my debits and subtracting my credits, right? So for, and I just messed up my formula. <laughs> hey, just give me one second. Let me redo this so I, okay. So again, right? It's still saying that my account balance is 23,625. Now, listen. If for the next transaction, let's say I spent money. I spent $1,500, right? So I, it, it will give me a credit, right? What happens if I enter in my credit here and I press enter? It's, yeah. it's going to automatically update it for you. So this is going to be your game changer is right here. This is what's going to constantly keep your, your numbers in check without you having to calculate this manually by hand. Okay? The beauty of Excel. Now, yes, looking at all these spreadsheets that you have, it will get better it will get better later, okay? So in this case, now you have a, you have a current running balance. So in this case, if I spend $1,500, it's going to decrease my checking account. If I add $600, it will increase my checking account. So that is what the goal of this spreadsheet is going to be is you are going to do this formula for every single account that you have here. Now for me, I'm going to do it as I go. I'm not going to do it all right now because, again, what happens when I have a credit balance that I'm dealing with? it's going to be a different formula. It's not the same, right? Because you're not you're not adding your debits and subtracting your credits. You're, it's the opposite. So definitely, I'm going to do this as I go. But And on top of that, when we get to week three and week four, I need you to, to tell me what those answers are to, for me to verify if that's correct or not. Okay? So there you go. So I... Um, I added $2,000, so now I'm at $23,000 in my checking account, right? 23625 So let's see what happened next. Next, I did have to do was incur a loss on disposal of asset. But what about my furniture? My furniture's in my assets. Again, mistake number one, you guys are beginners. You can't be jumping around accounts because, again, the likelihood of you forgetting about this loss on disposal of asset is very high. Okay? So best rule of thumb is for now, since you're in training mode, follow the exact 
order that you journalize in your transaction. That way, it makes it much more easier to keep track of whether you entered that transaction in or not. So in this case, I know for a fact, I put my checking account in there. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and go to my um, loss on disposal of assets, which is funny because it's the account right under my license. Okay. So there you go. Loss on disposal of asset. Today is the fourth. And what happened here? Um, loss on sale of furniture right i'm being specific on what the asset was which is the furniture okay i sold it and i i got i took a loss on it um general journal page one okay and did i debit or did i credit my account in this case i debited my account so that means my account balance is two thousand dollars Okay, on the debit side. Okay. All right. Last account on my list is the furniture account. So now I am going to end up going back to my assets, right? This is standard rules of procedures. Just follow along. All right. And locate your furniture. So it's after inventory. There it is. Furniture. Okay. I am looking at June 4th, and what happened here? I end up selling my furniture, so you can see sold furniture, okay? That's what happened. When did this happen? On my general journal page one. So again, if you want to sell reference, you can... Do the um, equal here so you don't have to type it in. It will copy whatever you had on that cell. Right? Now, in this case, did I debit or did I credit my furniture account for this transaction? Credit. You credited the $4,000. So, what should be my account balance in my furniture account? Well, if I do that same formula. Right? Now, if you are very, if you are directional, the directions here is going to be up one plus left two minus left one. Enter. Okay. If you are more mm, um, where you need to be explained, you're going to take your previous balance of $4,000, add your debit of nothing in that same row, Minus the $4,000 credit, enter, and your balance is now zero. Okay, I have nothing in my furniture account because I got rid of it. All right, so there you go. I completed my journal. I completed my ledger. Now, before I say I am done, I need to make that $2,000 deposit. Okay, so where's my deposit at? It's on your journal. Okay. So again, if you go down to the bottom, you have, uh, if, you, if, if it's sh shrunk, it's going to be the next couple dots are there. This is my check register. Did I write a check? No. Here, next one is deposits. So in this case, what was the receipt? Now, in this case, the receipt. What happened here? Why did you receive money? Okay. So in this case, I sold furniture. Okay, do I know where this money came from, who it came from? No, but I'm just going to go ahead and make a note here that I sold furniture. Okay, right? from, a random, uh, from a random person, right? What was the amount of? $2,000, okay? Now, realistically, are you going to run to the bank every chance that you get when you receive money? At the end of the day, right? So let's see what happened after my furniture. What do you know? It's the next day. So that means that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to deposit it that same day, June 4th, because it's the end of the day. Okay? So June 4th. Okay? And how much money am I going to deposit? 
Well, I only I only had that two thousand dollars available. So again, you definitely don't want to be, you don't want to be walking around with two thousand dollars in your pocket. Okay, you're better and safer to deposit that money. Oop, I put it in the wrong account. Now, deposit slip. In this case, you could just say one. Deposit slip number one for that two thousand dollars. Okay, and that's the amount that you are depositing is that two thousand dollars. Okay. So in this case, I just went to the bank, so this is deposit slip number one. In, in reality, you'll get an actual deposit slip number, but in this case, I'm just making a general um, assumption here. Okay, that this is my first deposit that I've made so far, and I've done it on the uh, June 4th, okay? So again, yes, you're right. Rule of thumb is you're not going to run to the bank as soon as you receive money, right? You wait till the very end of the day when all your transactions are complete. Then, at the end of the day, you can go ahead and deposit your money um, for it to clear the very next day. Okay? So in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make deposits every day if necessary. Okay? So in this case, if I don't ever have any transactions where I, I received money or did anything, I don't need to make any deposits. But again, if I made a sale... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to the bank at the end of the day to uh, ensure that the money goes into my bank account the next day. Yes. For the slip number, mm -hmm. for example, um, whenever I make a deposit at the bank, mm -hmm. they give us a, um, like a receipt paper that tells mm -hmm. how much we made in cash and in check and such. And mm -hmm. then they have their own slip number. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea to match that number to the slip number on my deposit this register? Or we just keep this is my very first slip um deposit number one. Which one's better in yeah, long run? Oh, 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 for sure. For sure the deposit slip that your bank gave you, you're gonna use that number. For sure, one hundred percent, because that is proof that a transaction has happened, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, in this case, because I, I don't have a real bank institute that's going to give me a real deposit slip number, yeah. I don't have that information. So my assumption is this is my very first transaction. Now, yes, you can. For instance, if it makes it easier for you to make that reference, right? And what you can do, too, is when you go into your checking account on your ledger, you can put the deposit slip number there. But for you to keep a good track record of that, you yourself can make this number so then you can keep a better track of your deposits, right? Makes sense, right? Instead of saying, yes. oh, which deposit did I do this? What date did I do this? But in this case, yes, general rule of thumb is you would use any source of information that has proof that a transaction exists. So in this case, you would 100% be using the actual bank deposit slip number that they gave you on that deposit slip. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I made my deposit. I recorded my journal. I recorded and posted to the ledger. Now, did I deal with inventory? No. I sold my furniture. I didn't purchase anything, right? I am now completely done with my transaction. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my general journal, and I'm going to go back to my um, scenario okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna pause here um, and uh, we will finish up uh, the w when we come back from the break we will go ahead and continue on with our scenario okay because it is exactly um, 256 right now so uh, I'm gonna pause here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 